Welcome to a five-minute farm doc. I'm Jonathan Coppas with the University of Illinois. Today we're going to walk through the Cover Crop Analyzer, a web-based decision support system for cover crop practices in Illinois fields. Uh, so bear with us as we uh, go to the website here, uh, covercrop.ncsa.illinois.edu. This will be the front page you see when you sign in. And obviously this has got uh, security features, and so you're going to have to go and log, uh, register with email address and go through the verification process. Once you get through that and are signed in as we are here, uh, you'll find yourself on the front page, uh, a little background about the project, um, our great sponsor, our great funders, like Illinois Nutrient Research and Education Council and the Walton Family Foundation who have helped fund this development project. To get started, you'll start with the by clicking on the Cover Crop Analyzer. This will take you to this mapping feature. Uh, here we are in Sh Champaign-Urbana. Where you want to begin the process is over here at My Farm. Jump into My Farm, and you're going to add a field. And most of you have used, in some form or fashion, probably one of these kind of interactive mapping tools. So let's go south of town. Let's find a field. Obviously, you're going to want to use the uh, field that is uh, one, of, one part of your farm. We are using the common land unit boundaries uh, that USDA uses for programs. Um, obviously, they may not always align exactly with your field. Uh, for now, this is our best, uh, our best uh, common land unit, our best geospatial use for the field. We've got longitude and latitude information in there. You're going to select that field. You see it highlighted. You're going to enter some name for your field. And the first choice you have is whether or not that field has subsurface tiles. That's going to obviously have a huge impact on uh, nitrogen loss and other uh, nitrogen and water dynamics in the field. So we're going to presume this is a subsurface tile drained field, as are most fields in this part of Illinois. When you hit add the field, uh, it's going to add this into uh, your page here. And just know that what we're doing is we're pulling in information, particularly USDA's cropland data layer information, which is uh, the public information around uh, cropping practices. So this should have a year-by-year -year, um, planting uh, information we're also pulling in USDA data around uh, Sergo Soils database, so we have a soil uh, uh, understanding of the soils in that field. We add it. Now we're in the system. Now we've got a field in that system. Let's start a job. And we pick our test field. It should show up on the screen. As of right now, the cover crop tool is using only cereal rye. That is the cover crop we are able to simulate at this point in time. Obviously, a lot of interest in getting multiple crop options and even mixed crop options. But for right now, we're starting with cereal rye. Now, one of the things I want to point out is once you've added that field and even before you start a job, you may want to go back in and check the information. So here is a summary of what we have for this field, year-over-year um, -year crops, so soybeans in 15 corn in 16. We can see our rotation there. Uh, some basic data around that field. So what's going on here is we've created default files of information that are based on averages or, or, or common practices in the area, and we're using that as, as sort of the, the default system that you can go through. By all means, uh, you can make this more accurate for your farm and your fields by going in to the crop history and updating this. So planting and harvest dates, uh, your row spacing, depth, uh, seed population, your fertilizer application, all of the, the background information that only you will have for this field, um, you can enter it here and improve the, the tool's uh, operation. If you've put cover crops on that field in the past, you would add that into here, and you can see the variety of, of information you can, you can add to that. We're going to look at, at running a cover crop simulation um, after soybeans in 2020, which were harvested uh, late September. It looks like the 28th of September. We're going to go ahead and get back to the job now. So we put, we've selected cereal rye for this field. We know we, uh, we harvested the soybeans back on uh, September the 28th. So just to be simple, we're going to say we established our cereal rye two days later on the 30th of September. And now we're looking forward. When do I want to plant my cash crop, my commercial crop, my corner soybeans after this cereal rye? Uh, let's let's just take a, a date here in April. Now you've got an option about the weather. And, and obviously this is a pretty rough, uh, you know, a pretty broad forecast. Uh, it maybe can't even call it a forecast. 
What we're looking at is the average weather for this area based on the Illinois State Water Survey data over the last 10 years. So we've averaged uh, precipitation and temperature over time um, to get to this sort of rough simulation of weather. You can choose hot, and what this will do will go back into the last 10 years and pick the hottest year or the coldest year, the driest year on record, or the wettest year on record that we have in the last 10 years, and it'll use that as the data running forward. So it'll simulate against uh, those those temperatures and 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 precipitation information uh, that we have. So we're going to stick with average for now. Um, obviously, a lot of options for you, the user. Um, and as we go, we are certainly looking forward to improving um, the weather uh, data and capabilities, even hopefully someday some forecasting capabilities in there. Uh, so right now you should know that what's going on is that the, the modeling capability uh, is running in the background on the, on the servers here at the uh, University of Illinois through the National Center for Supercomputing Applications. And we are running simulations uh, using what, we call, what is called DSAT, a, a crop simulation model, open source modeling, that now is running serial rye using that weather information on that soil information in that field in Illinois to give us a visualization, uh, a visualized set of outputs. Critical in our outputs is we are estimating or simulating uh, what the modeling data tells us would be uh, the serial rye growth in that field from establishment with a two-week termination window built around when we think, uh, when you entered uh, crop planting date for your commercial crop. We've got an estimate of the biomass in the field. So how many pounds per acre of biomass is out there? What is the carbon to nitrogen ratio of that biomass? And for many of you that uh, know uh, with cover crops, carbon to nitrogen ratio is an important indicator of how much uh, nitrogen is locked up. So how much is it absorbed and is, is, is held within the biomass of that crop? And this has uh, important implications for uh, nitrogen mineralization and immobilization. So how much of that is, uh, is out of the field that may have to be addressed with some, some starter fertilizer, for example, depending on your crop management practices and plans. So we can see that information into our two-week window around uh, when we think we want to plant. You've got over here uh, some, some of this, uh, this numerical data, uh, the plant biomass at that termination or at that cover crop, um, commercial crop planting date, about 1,700 uh, pounds, 1,740 almost uh, plant biomass pounds per acre with a carbon to nitrogen ratio of over 28. We, at, we would estimate in this field a nitrogen uptake of about 23 pounds per acre. You can see that here if you do the, if you click on the window, it's going to show you the cover crops uptake of nitrogen and the simulated soil uh, or inorganic nitrogen in the soil and the difference between cover crop and non-cover cropping in that scenario. We are also uh, going to provide you information on the growing degree day. So this is uh, the temperature, cumulative Fahrenheit temperature over that cover crop growth period. Uh, and you can, you can see how that uh, goes through there. And then we are in the process of improving our nitrogen loss reduction estimates based on that growing cover crop, the nitrogen uptake, and so forth. So you can see some of that information coming forward. As we look uh, and scroll down in this tool, the other feature that we have uh, that we've added recently is a decomposition modeling. So what happens uh, after that cover crop has been ter terminated? How quickly does it decompose? Uh, so the rate of decomposition over time with or without tillage. So you can uh, alter this based on your actual practices. So we get a rate of decomposition and our estimates of how much biomass remains out there. And so again, this is another important dynamic as to uh, the, the material on the field. Uh, the potential, this kind of sets us up to know better uh, where the nitrogen um, remains, how much of it is returning back into that soil, and that raises all sorts of questions about when it's plant available, things that we're still researching and looking at. Uh, and for those of you uh, looking at, or as we talk more and more about carbon markets and uh, efforts to address climate change, we are also thinking through how this would work uh, as a measurement of carbon that has been um, captured and, and is being held at the surface and in the soil surface there through, and how that decomposition of that's going to impact our outputs. So again, this has been a quick tour of the cover crop analyzer. Um, we want to thank uh, the development team at, at the University of Illinois and the National Center for Supercomputing Applications here in the College of ACES uh, with the uh, Agricultural and Biological Engineers and at Purdue University uh, and their Department of Agronomy as we've worked together under funding from the Illinois Nutrient Research Education Council and the Walton Family Foundation 
to pull together a cover crop simulator that Illinois farmers can use in their fields to get a sense of what a cereal rye cover crop may be doing over uh, weather, different weather uh, patterns and actual soil and input management information. Thank you.